Hello there, how are you? I'm good, yes. Five more PS4 couch co-op games from Coop. We've got a few randoms, uh, and we've got two obviouses that you've probably have heard and seen before, but we have to put them at the end of the list. This one is Riverbound. Check out what I can do with the menu. Yep, Death Stranding is uh, been distributed today on review copy basis only. The proper YouTubers, not me. Uh, yeah, uh, hmm. we're gonna do this, uh, just one more time. It's called a little thing called equality. It's all right, we're gonna do our couch co-op thing today, it's fine. Riverbound is actually extremely cute. Check this out, I'm playing as a Mackie role and uh, my companion is a, I think a donut, I think a, sp I think a pink donut. We've got lollipops at the moment, but it's a, you know, kind of asymmetric. Uh, hack and slash, but it's quite light on RPG elements. There's another game that's coming up that's really strong on this front, but this one's pretty cutesy. I love the sort of micro Minecraft esque um, destruction mechanic on the furniture in game. It's it's quite endearing. This one, it's it's obviously good for a wider audience. It's not going to cause any cardiac arrest with its gameplay, not in a hurry anyway, but uh, there's something I love about it. It's to do with its characters and the crazy enemies and the boss fights and the switch between range and close quarters combat. And also you do have a special on the R buttons and you can see them in the bottom corners. Each character has a different special and there's unlockable characters as you play through the game. I think that's probably one of the hooks is getting new characters open and seeing what their specials are all about. But I do love the enemy and enemy designs with just their crazy look. There's no real particular theme, but there's themes to the different worlds. I think there was eight worlds there at the beginning, all with their own bosses at the end. I've picked it because it's very child friendly. If you've got someone a lot younger who wants to enjoy, who you want to enjoy video games with, but and you also want to have a half decent time, but they'll still be amused with how cool this game looks and how easily accessed it is, and of course it's got that Minecraft vibe to it. Then it's just, it's definitely worth a look. Don't go out and buy it if you're totally hardcore into first person shooters or something. Okay, so Castle, an interesting change of format here. This is kind of a bit like Tricky Towers. So if you remember that, but that was one of my strongest puzzlers. I would I would build this as a puzzler. So there's two game modes essentially. There's the cooperative game mode, the single player game model campaign, which can be played, you know, sing, uh, single player and co-op. Now you can see that what we're doing is we're building, we're building up and we're having to match up the symbols and the element type of the blocks that are falling in. And it will be a bit like Overcooked where on the left it's asking you what it wants. So you need to line everything up. And if you get hit by a block that's come down, you get reset and put back outside. And of course you can jump over the blocks as well. So it, it's a very simple premise indeed, but it's got given some extra layers you'll see in a sec because it starts throwing curveballs at you. That comes in the form of a mole, which you need to hit with a hammer that can drop if you get certain good combinations of the blocks. So you, there's a hell of a lot going on. I know the game doesn't look uh, that complicated, but things just start stacking up when it comes to the management and the communication between the two of you. Okay, so now but this is the mode that I really enjoy. So there's a versus mode on it. So this is the Tricky Towers, um, you know, similarities. So we're both at, against each other and we're both battling to get the mechanical parts that's being requested in the center of the screen there. Well, it's a mechanical part at the moment, but that will flip and change and could be, you know, it needs a block of grass, etc. It, it's totally weird. Okay, let's get on to Sundred. Sundred for me is the closest I'm gonna to get to be able to enjoy genre like maybe Dead Cells or Hollow Knight with somebody else because it's a quality made game and it is very, very much geared up to be able to have two people playing. Now it's up to four people playing, but that is a bit of a headache because it is quite a busy hack and slash platformer. Yeah. 
The way the game shares the attributes and unlockable perks and skills with the other guest player is really cool. They just get everything you have and there's quite a lot of depth with the skill tree itself. So there's stuff that you can put in that would give you a bit of health after a kill. There's stuff that you can put in that makes your shield recharge quicker. It's got very heavy action RPG elements behind it. But at the same time, it's a very good looking hack and slash platform game. I've reviewed it in quite a lot of detail before. It features some very cool enemy design and I love how confidently the camera pulls out and there's two people on screen and it doesn't shy away from being quite a difficult platform game in its own right but it's the hoarded enemy and enemy design stuff that I love so much this game is a very strong two player three player maybe four player time will tell we'll have to have a look I'll I will it will be something that I'll, I'll test out now oh, here we go I coop you were bound to switch one weird as hell game in here and yeah we have we've got cat quest 2 i know nothing about cat quest 1 i will confess that at this stage but i have kind of had a bit of a real interest in in how this game's looking and playing on a single player level and a two player level so there's only two player but it's got a an adorable aesthetic and art style to it there's quite a lot of effort has been put in to making sure this game is just unbelievably adorable and cutesy as hell It has got quite a riverbound look to it. I'm also getting sorts of Ditto vibes from it because the game has, this is a full blown action RPG adventurer with massive dungeons, full armor and weapon spec and magic spec breakdowns, a colossal village and characters everywhere. It is massive. And unlike Riverbound, it seems to have a hell of a lot of depth in the character development and going down different skill trees and just finding really cool shit everywhere all over this amazing map. I'm surprised as you to, to be singing this game's praises. And like I mentioned with Riverbound before, if you've got like a younger audience or someone you want to chill with who's not into advancedly complicated action RPGs, then again, this is a, a real no brainer. It, on the surface, it looks like a cutesy mobile game, but deep down, there's just all these different weapon types, like Nino Kumi level of different weapon types and different like sorcerer, uh, mage classes, etc. I'm only really touching the surface of it, but the boss fights and what I am seeing are a hell of a lot of fun. That's why it's quite high on the list and that's why I keep comparing it to the first game on the list because this really is an identical game model, but you've got a huge amount of depth under it. It's like an iceberg. You, the tip is really all you're seeing. There's a a lot more under the surface with this game. Probably why it was sequeled. Maybe the original sold quite well, I'm not sure. Well, as sure as the bear shits in the woods, we were gonna have Borderlands 3 on here and uh, I did put a detailed split screen review out about this game. Is it, it, It's not number one. There's five games on this list. There's, a, there's got some issues with this menu thing. There's got some issues with the menu thing. You can tell I've been back home for a good couple of months. What I mean by that is that when the big black button on the pad is pressed and another player goes in for their infantry, which you are doing all the time on a looter shooter, the other player experiences some jerkiness, some slowdown in frame rate and all this other nonsense, which is not something you want with Borderlands. It did it on Borderlands 2 as well. They're dealing with it, I'm told. It's still there. So what you have to do is work around it and just make sure neither of you bugger around with your infantry when combat's on, which is a real hindrance to a game like this, especially a game that's as big as this on a budget level. Grudges aside, it's incredible to see a brand new AAA title with a full split screen mode in it. A few things have been taken away like the four player and the other horizontal vertical line switching, but it's, you know, it's fucking Borderlands. It's brand new and we've got it on split screen. Deservedly, I think, Plants and Zombies, Battle for Neighborville. It's now making a name for itself, a total sleeper release from EA and PopCap. They sort of snuck it under the radar. I think it was because they, it's an online game. They probably didn't want a massive shout about the launch. They've also got some really cool Halloween stuff in there. Actually, Borderlands 3 has it's got some amazing uh, Halloween DLC in it. But this is cool. They've dressed up the hub. You know the deal. It's not, you know, that's not, there's no revelations there. But 
it's such a perfect split screen game because it offers such a deep campaign that both people can play at their own pace and open up and the rewards are just really cool because it's a class based game you're not like you are with Borderlands 3 swapping in and out of your infantry all the time you pick a class there's no need to go into a menu and look at look at the visuals It's a performance of this game that actually does really get me because it doesn't shy back from having as much on screen as it can possibly get and just the noises and the art style and that kids cartoon thing and, and all of those really vibrant colours and fun weapon types and different class types and just the hilarity with the characters, voices, how they look, how everybody interacts with each other. When this game gets busy, it gets so busy. This is a really cool example. This is a timed boss event. There's a random spawn in. We had to kill him as quickly as we could and if you don't, you know, you just don't get it. And and that's, I like that idea of almost procedurally generated stuff happening or non-scripted stuff happening within a map. But I have found the garden ops to be the classic way mode we all love with Plants vs Zombies. I think one of the key elements to a good couch co-op game, especially a good couch co-op shooter, is accessibility. And Borderlands 3 is really not for the whole family, not by a long stretch. And this is, and this comes with no performance issues with the split screen mode. And the series has always kept to that. It's just really cool and it's still a bastion for us split screen gamers. And so much fun online as well with your split screen compadre. Sure, you have to pay for a PlayStation access, but all of this footage was done with an, an guest, someone without a sign in. It was really cool. As always, guys, I love you all. I will see you down there. Have a look at some of my other couch co-op videos. There's a whole playlist on my channel. I do these as often as I can. So if there's a game on here that you're not wanting or, or haven't seen, go and have a look at the channel. Take care, guys.